Hi, I'm the Octopus Lady, you're watching Alien Ocean, and let's talk about pistol shrimp today, shall we? Yeah, so I know I said in my last video that this video is going to be about mantis shrimp again. And specifically, I wanted this video to be about their eyes, and only their eyes, because mantis shrimp have the most absurd eyes. And it seemed like it would be easy to dedicate a whole video to them. <laughs> I was so young then. So I try to get as much information as I can for my videos from academic sources, peer-reviewed scientific papers, right? This is important to me because one, sometimes non-academic sources are just wrong, and two, non-academic sources often just barely scratch the surface of whatever it is I want to talk about. When I make my videos, I am always on the lookout for information I haven't heard before, because if I haven't heard about it, then you, my lovely audience, probably haven't heard it either. And I always find information I've never heard before in scientific papers. Papers. The problem with scientific papers, though, is that they can be really hard to understand. And when it came to mantis shrimp eyes, I did not understand a single paper about them. Every single paper I tried to read felt like it was written in hieroglyphs, because these weren't really papers about marine biology, which I have a very strong background in. They were papers about optics and light which I have no background in. And let me tell you, the science of optics and light is very complicated. Like, I literally spent hours trying to understand a single sentence in one of these papers, and even after all that work, I still didn't understand the sentence. So I decided to change the topic even though I really didn't want to, because what little I did understand about mantis shrimp eyes blew my mind, and I want to tell you all about it, but I can't. At least not to the level of detail that I want. I can only give you a very surface level explanation. You know what? Not even explanation. Surface level description of mantis shrimp eyes, just like the dozens, hundreds, thousands of other surface level descriptions that exist on the internet about them. And that's not good enough for me. Maybe at some point in the future I can come back to this topic, but it's just not in the cards right now. And by the way, if anyone knows any mantis shrimp eye scientists that might be willing to sit down with me and help me understand all this, can you maybe hit me up? Please? All right, now with all that said, let's talk about pistol shrimp today, shall we? Or sometimes they're called snapping shrimp but I think pistol shrimp is the much cooler name. So pistol shrimp are, to probably nobody's surprise, crustaceans. And like, uh, mantis shrimp, they are also in the class of Malacostrica. Sup, Nico? Can I help you with something, man? I got, I got Tony his money, so... It, it is, it is a very nice YouTube channel. Why would something... Is this a shakedown? What the actual fu- Oh jeez, oh my god, dude, I know you're literally called a pistol shrimp, but why are you carrying a Tommy gun? Pistol shrimp are in the order of Decapoda, with all the other shrimp and crabs and lobsters that you're probably familiar with, and specifically they're in the family of Alphiidae, members of which first appeared about 150 million years ago, making them the much, much younger relatives to their stomatopod cousins. And pistol shrimp are found all over the world, from about 40 degrees north to about 40 degrees south, and they like to hide out in crevices, like between corals and reefs, amongst oysters, under rocks and in sponge cavities. Gross. Alright, so a notable characteristic of pistol shrimp is that many of them have one claw that is like way bigger than the other. So what's that all about? Well, it turns out that pistol shrimp have a lot more in common with mantis shrimp besides just being in the same class. They use their giant claw as a way to kill prey, defend their homes, and communicate with conspecifics using everyone's favorite a uh, phenomenon in which the static pressure of a liquid reduces to below the liquid's vapor pressure, leading to the formation of small vapor-filled cavities in the liquid cavitation, which they achieve through snapping their large claw, hence their much less cool common name. And if you don't know what cavitation is, go watch my last video about mantis shrimp. And if you do know what cavitation is, you should still go watch my last video because I reference it a surprising amount in this video. Also, I kind of think it's my best video so far, if I may toot my own horn for a minute. Side note, I read in a paper that apparently dolphins can't swim faster than 15 meters per second because it causes cavitation on their fins, which is painful. Meanwhile, members of the Scombrid family, which, wow, what a name. That sounds like a family out of like Downton Abbey or something. Yes, the Scombrid family have arrived for their visit to Madam. Anyway, members of that family, which are like mackerels and tuna, can swim a lot faster than 15 meters per second because they don't have pain receptors on their fins, which, 
Ha ha, sucks to suck, dolphins. Pistol shrimp seem to have developed two different ways of snapping. One type of pistol shrimp uses a combination of different muscles, the other uses a pair of special discs. But let's talk about their anatomy really quick. The pistol shrimp claw has two main parts to it, the propus and the dactyl, which mantis shrimp also have. Oh, wait, not quite, but close enough. On the dactyl, there is a protrusion called the plunger, and in the propus, there's a socket called the socket, which the plunger fits into perfectly. For the first type of pistol shrimp, the act of snapping starts off with the dactyl getting cocked back through a combination of opener and closer muscles, which causes a bunch of potential energy to build up in the closer muscles. And if you've seen my mantis shrimp video, this probably sounds kind of familiar. Then a second, smaller closer muscle contracts, which causes the claw to snap shut. And we're not going to get into a ton of detail beyond that because I'm not doing this again. I'm just not. The socket gets flooded with water as the claw opens, so when the plunger slams into it, all the water spews out as a jet, and it comes out so fast that it causes cavitation. The other type of pistol shrimp, they snap through the use of these discs on the propus and the dactyl, and also through the use of cohesion. So, all right, physics stuff again. Er, wait, is this chemistry? Whatever. So cohesion is what makes water molecules stick to each other. For reasons I'm not going to elaborate on here, because as established in other videos, chemistry is for nerds, water molecules are slightly positively charged on one end and slightly negatively charged on the other end, which means they're attracted to each other and like to stick together. You ever do that experiment in like science class where you try to fit as many drops of water as you possibly can onto a penny or something and instead of the water immediately running off the penny it starts to form this dome. That's cohesion. That's what it looks like when all the water molecules stick to themselves. So when the dactyl is open these two discs abut each other perfectly, and the forces of water cohesion keep them stuck together and therefore keeps the claw open. And cohesion can be surprisingly strong, as the pistol shrimp basically needs to pull really, really hard on a closer muscle until it builds up enough tension to overcome the cohesive forces between the two discs, and when it does, the claw snaps shut. Jet of water shoots out, cavitation bubble forms, collapses, causes chaos and destruction, etc, etc. I tried to find information on the force exerted by the water jet, so I could compare it to the force of a mantis shrimp punch, but I couldn't find anything, which was disappointing. I'm not sure if this is because there hasn't been any research done on this, or I was just using the wrong search terms, but if anyone has links to papers that might be able to answer this question, please leave a comment. I did find a lot of information about how quickly the claw closes, about 0.5 milliseconds, and how fast the jet of water moves, about 25 meters per second. I also found out that, like mantis shrimp, the collapsing bubble from the pistol shrimp snap reaches temperatures of up to 5,000 Kelvin, and creates a flash of light, which scientists have apparently dubbed shrimpoluminescence. That needs to be workshopped. And then there was a ton of information about how loud the snaps are. For a long time, researchers thought the sound was coming from just the two parts of the claw hitting each other, but nope. Just like mantis shrimp, pistol shrimp snaps are loud because of the imploding cavitation bubble. They have been recorded at hitting between 190 to 210 decibels, which I didn't know how loud that was, so I tried to get some frames of reference, but they were a little contradictory. This one website said that 190 decibels is equivalent to a shotgun blast, but then this website said 140 decibels was equivalent to a basic gunshot, I guess? I don't know, are generic gunshots quieter than shotgun gunshots? And this one says that the loudest sound possible is 194 decibels, which, okay. Either pistol shrimp are out here breaking the laws of physics, or this isn't accurate, or maybe it's different underwater. I don't know. I think the most important thing to take away from this is that their snaps are really loud. Like, really loud. So loud that they apparently mess with the use of underwater acoustics for passive sonar, but can be used to create pictorial images of objects in the ocean. An interesting difference between smasher mantis shrimp and pistol shrimp is their, for lack of a better word, intentionality when it comes to the use of cavitation. For mantis shrimp, every single time they punch something, the secondary cavitation blast not only does damage to whatever they're punching, but also to themselves, specifically to their raptorial limbs. The surface of their hammer appendages get busted so often that mantis shrimp need to molt much more frequently than other crustaceans. It almost seems like cavitation is an unfortunate side effect for mantis shrimp, but they've evolved adaptations to it. Meanwhile, pistol shrimp can cavitate all they want, and they're fine. The jet of water 
water actually shoots out at like an angle, it kind of goes past the side of the dactyl as opposed to through it, which would totally mess up this part of the claw if that were the case. To quote this paper, it seems that the pistol shrimp is the sole species evolved to actively use cavitation itself as a weapon to kill slash stun its prey. And yes, pistol shrimp use these jets of water to hunt and stuff, but they also use them as a way to communicate with each other. When pistol shrimp interact, they will snap at each other, but it doesn't seem to be for malicious reasons, as the snaps don't usually cause injury. In fact, it seems that when pistol shrimp want to fight, they will actually grab onto each other and hurt each other that way. And when they do snap at each other, they hold their big claws up in front of themselves, potentially as a way to protect themselves from injury, but they also have these hairs that grow on their claws that researchers think are for analyzing purposes. The hairs are capable of transmitting information about the frequency, amplitude, and direction of the water jet, which can give a pistol shrimp an idea of who they're interacting with. As near as I can tell, scientists are not entirely sure what information is being transmitted, but we do know that you can tell if a pistol shrimp is male or female by analyzing their water jets, and also how big the pistol shrimp is. So snapping isn't just for killing things, it's for talking too. The last thing I want to talk about is the mutualistic relationship that some pistol shrimp have with goby fish, because I think it's cute. Gobies are often found sharing a burrow with pistol shrimp, or sometimes a pair of pistol shrimp, and this situation is very beneficial to both species, hence mutualistic relationship. Pistol shrimp are very good at building homes, so gobies sometimes roll up and are like, hey, do you need a roommate? Um, yeah, sure, cool. I know you're blind, so I can be like, you're seeing eye fish. Oh, I'm actually not blind. What? But I've heard for years that pistol shrimp are blind. That's why they room with gobies. Yeah, that's actually not true. A recent study has shown that I can see as well as basically any other shrimp. Oh. For real? Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, right? Not all pistol shrimp live with gobies, so if we were all blind, how would those without gobies be able to survive? Oh. Yeah, that's true. Well, then what do you need me for? You know, I'm not super sure. This same paper does acknowledge that you can definitely see better than me, so maybe that's why I keep you around? I don't know, seems like more research needs to be done. Anyway, come on in, man, make yourself comfortable. And the goby will just sit at the entrance to their burrow and keep an eye out for predators while using different alarm signals to warn the pistol shrimp of potential threats. Like sometimes they'll just back their butt up into the burrow to let the shrimp know that something dangerous might be outside. Or if the threat level is very high, the goby will spin right around and dart inside as if to say, don't go out there, man! And if the pistol shrimp needs to leave the burrow, the goby will go with them, and the pistol shrimp will, like, keep one of their antennae against the side of the goby so they're always touching each other, which is, like, isn't that so cute? I love mutualism in nature. It brings me such joy. Thanks for watching another episode of Alien Ocean. Today's hopefully interesting question is... What would you rename Shrimpo Luminescence to? Cause man, that is a bad name. Shout out to my patrons if you'd like early access to our videos or get your name in the beautiful credits, or you just want to support the work we do here on this channel, feel free to sign up at patreon.com slash theoctopuslady. Also like, share, and subscribe and all that. Um, I'm also trying to get back on Twitter. I got a Twitter account like years ago, but being on that website made me sad, so I basically abandoned it. But now I've gotten some followers there, so I'm trying to be more active. So go check that out, I guess? I don't know. What do people do on Twitter? Or maybe the better question is what would you want to see from me on Twitter? Anyway, thanks again for watching, and until next time, this has been your friendly neighborhood octopus lady reminding you that you don't need to go into space to find aliens.